The customer's concern is a battery that fails to start the car after it's been sitting for a few days or even a few weeks. Obviously, the problem is some type of parasitic drain. How do you locate the source? A very popular method for locating the source of a parasitic drain involves testing the fuses and the voltage drop across them. It's based on voltage drop theory and it goes something like this that all available voltage supplied to a closed circuit will be consumed by the various sources of resistance in that circuit proportionally. Fuses are a source of resistance in an electrical circuit, though a very small source, and a portion of the voltage applied, that is system voltage, will be consumed by that resistance. If we place our meter leads on either side of the fuse, any voltage we see is a measurement of that voltage proportion, or the amount of drop across the fuse's resistance. It also identifies that there is current flowing through the fuse, and that can be a good thing to know when all of the circuits in the vehicle are supposed to be turned off. However, there are some flaws with this testing method. First, not all fuses are easily tested. The cartridge-style fuse, for example, requires way too much effort to access. It can also be difficult to know for sure that the fuse you've identified is actually the one protecting the circuit or circuits causing the drain. You have to convert the voltage measurement to current using any of the numerous conversion charts available on the internet before you could conclude that the current draw was excessive or just part of a bigger problem. Most importantly, it's easy to miss an intermittent problem. Unless you're measuring drop across the fuse at the exact moment that the draw is occurring, well, you can see it would be very easy to miss that circuit and overlook that as the cause. So what's the answer? The first stop is to test the battery and check its state of charge. It needs to be at least 12.4 volts before you can proceed. A weak battery can cause some modules to behave erratically, and that will certainly affect your testing. The next thing is to check the vehicle for any accessory installations or devices that could be causing the draw. Common items include cell phone charges or any other device for that matter that uses the vehicle's power outlet as a power supply. We also have to wait until all the vehicle's modules have timed out and shut down, otherwise known as going to sleep. Before we do though, we must have the vehicle set up so that we can access the various fuse panels, typically under the hood and in the passenger compartment, but some manufacturers even put them in the trunk. So we have to fool the vehicle into thinking that the hood, the trunk lid, and the doors are all closed so that we can still have access to the fuse panels we need when we're chasing down this problem. Using the wiring diagrams determine the location of the various switches that report back to the vehicle that everything is closed. There can be an independent switch or a switch located in the latch assembly. Determine which style you have and either jumper the switch or close the latch to simulate a closed condition. You can verify the status of the switch inputs using a scan tool. And remember, if the vehicle is equipped with a smart key, you must keep that smart key well away from the vehicle. With the vehicle prepared, use the key fob to lock the car. This will also confirm that the vehicle thinks everything is closed, and then the modules will time out and go to sleep. The most accurate way to measure a parasitic drain is through the use of an ammeter. And the ammeter can be wired in series between the negative battery post and the negative battery terminal, or it can be a clamp-on low amp probe. The probe can be a self-contained handheld model or one that plugs into your digital multimeter. Either method will help you correctly measure the amount of draw, but neither is going to do much to help you in locating the reason for the draw, especially if it's an intermittent problem. That is, unless you want to stare at the low amp reading until the problem occurs. So what kind of tool do we have that could monitor the current flow for us while we went on to other jobs? Well, how about your DSO or digital storage oscilloscope? You can monitor the current level on the scope display while you're waiting for the modules to time out. 
Now there are a few good reasons for using a scope to help you locate the parasitic drain. First, I tend to find that a current measured by the scope is the most accurate way to do so, especially when we're looking at very low current levels. Second, I can set it up for a long time sweep that will allow me to let my scope watch for that intermittent while I work on other projects. I can come back at any time to see if the current level has changed. If it has, I can use the data captured to get some information about the nature of the intermittent. Does it happen on a regular basis? When it does occur, does it last for a similar amount of time? I can use this information to help me in my diagnosis when I'm looking for the cause. If you're fortunate enough to own a good thermal imaging camera, you can use that to scan the fuse box to see if there is any heat signatures visible. If so, it can be an indication of a fuse that has current passing through it. If not, you can use the voltage drop method to test the accessible fuses in the main fuse box, identified by reviewing the power distribution wiring schematic in your service information system. Regardless, it's always best to make sure that you're making your tests when the draw is actually occurring. And that's where the information you learned from your scope capture may come in handy. The goal, of course, is to isolate the problem to one particular circuit or component, and from there, you can make your repair. Just be sure that you verify your repair before you return the vehicle to your customer. Thanks for watching.